Hello, anybody? I'm sorry, I'm just tweeting out. I'm talking to myself here. I don't know who's saying hello. Uh, hey, Blue Mystic Ninja. Adrian, how are you? I believe that is Adrian. Uh, good to see everybody. I hope uh, people have been enjoying our uh, Rockin' and Reagan Awards. Figured this would be a nice uh, little holiday treat. My, uh, oop, dropped the phone. My uh, daughter is having a play date, so I've got uh, a little bit of chill time to uh, just relax and, and play a game before I have to do any editing or any other, other things that we uh, got to take care of. But uh, let me know how the stream looks and, uh, and plays and sounds. I did terribly in that match because I was setting up everything here. Good to see you guys. Is this still live? Check, check, check. Yes, it's on. Is this thing on? Let me know how I sound, okay? We hear you. Fantastic. You play much of this? I've played tons of this. All right, let's go to Endor. I really want to see the... Uh, I haven't actually played the crate uh, world. I played through the um, uh, single-player stuff, which was pretty fun. Um, let's equip, equip some uh, cards. Oh, I got them all in there. Okay, here we go. So we're going to be the assault. Uh, Timberwolf, hello, how are you? Sounds good, awesome. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining me today. So, uh, good to see you got this, uh, uh, good to see this got a price drop from 79 bucks to 49 bucks in Canada. Yeah, they've got to do some stuff, huh? Got to win back some favor. I got to tell you guys, though, uh, I, I like this game. It's fun. I, I mean, I hate all the paywall bullshit, uh, but I enjoy playing this game a lot. Every time I jump in, I have a good time. I, I think it's worth 50 bucks, for sure. There's lots of content in here. You just gotta really want to do it. You know, you gotta want to play it. And it's it's not gonna be a, you know, super competitive, you know, experience like Overwatch or anything like that. It's, it's not meant to be. It's a Star Wars... It's meant to be accessible Star Wars shooty shooty bang bang fun. My favorite part of the game, though, is absolutely what Criterion did with the... Um, uh, with the, with the Starfighter Assault. It's fantastic. So let's talk some Jedi spoilers. Has everybody seen Jedi? Anybody anybody that doesn't want to talk Jedi spoilers? Uh, oh, damn it. Oh, Talos wants to play with me in here right now. He's playing. Um, I won't be able to concentrate on both things. But anybody that doesn't want to talk any uh, Last Jedi spoilers, uh, let us know in the chat right now. Okay, I'm gonna give it a few minutes before we get into it. Has everybody seen The Last Jedi? Audrion has seen it. Accessing the main computer. Work it. Watched it, yes, yes. Okay. A anybody that doesn't want any uh, Star Wars spoilers, you either gotta plug your ears, find another thing to watch. Or let me know in the chat. 
Oh shit, I'm getting started. Right. They'll try to disable the equipment. Be ready. So, I really liked the, the movie. You guys m might have watched my review, so I reviewed it on uh, Film Fury, and then I did a, uh, uh, a, re a live review with Ben and Jose, and then a spoilery conversation with Ben and Jose, and then a spoilery conversation with, uh, with um, Johnny on Film Fury. And I do really dig it, but I have... Dallas, do I have to let you in? I don't even know what you got to do. I don't. I don't know what I got to do. But I do have some problems with it. It's not perfect. Hundred points for killing that thing. Um, and it's uh, it's it's kind of bugging me. Like today, I tweeted out that it, it reminded me of. There's decisions in the movie that kind of remind me of. Uh, the Dark Knight Rises, which also has some really fantastic stuff in it, but there's just some weird logic issues that... Um, there's some weird logic issues in, in Dark Knight Rises that kind of bum me out. Okay. Um, the whole movie was a lot to process, but overall I enjoyed it. Uh, I was shocked with how Leia survived. Yeah, and I talked about this in the uh, in the spoiler conversation. I'm getting all kinds of messages and stuff here, but it, it did seem like um, that was a perfect opportunity. There was a perfect opportunity to have this incredibly beautiful celebration of her um, selflessness, um, and they gave it to Laura Dern, and uh, it was. It was weird in retrospect, and I feel like that decision almost should have been, even if, if um, it was all in post and, and, and uh, Terry Fisher had passed away, I feel like, and they made some comments, Disney and CG stuff with, uh, with Leia, I, I feel like that almost would have been worth it. You know, the opportunity to... Uh, head for that position. Be ready to spring a trap. I do have enough battle points. What does she do? She's just uh, oh, she's got a rocket. Gun. Sure, why not? Uh, even if if uh, haven't seen me on on in a long time. It's I do stream quite a bit on um, on YouTube because all of, most of our video content is there. It's just it's a, a nice and tidy. Oh, well, there's some Ewoks. You can't kill them. Though. Uh, um. So Laura Dern does this amazing thing, one of the most amazing sequences in, in all of Star Wars. We're gonna get, we're gonna spoil some stuff right here. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry. Uh, but the hyperspace jump into the uh, into the Imperial fleet was just outstanding. It was so breathtaking, and that could have been just this un unbelievably cool moment for Leia. And uh, I feel like that was a missed opportunity because I, I don't know what the hell they're going to do to ever be able to match that in 9, or match that up with that um, to ever match an opportunity like that in episode 9. So I feel like they should have just done it. They should have just done the CG if they had to, like they couldn't reshoot or whatever, or, or like recut that sequence so that Leia got on the... Uh, back on the ship and did the hyperspace thing. That would have been amazing. That's the part I was trying to mention. Yeah, right there. Um, I've seen I've seen the movie twice, and what I noticed the second time is that when the, uh, the ship that Leia's on gets blasted, um, you see her inhale, and you see her take... She is aware that, that um, the uh, First Order is going to blast a hole in the ship. And she knows that she's going out and preps for it. In an instant, I mean, it's a small detail, but you can kind of see that she braces for it. it sucks that we don't get to see uh, Admiral Akbar or any of the other uh, leadership that they talk about. There's just like a sentence. It sucks that we don't get to see any of them go out at all, you know, or try to be heroic or have have a real tragic moment. We don't get that at all. Such a like this game just feels like Star Wars. They really nailed that stuff. Um. So that bugs me. 
I've been talking a lot about this movie, right? Over this, this is what you do when you see a Star Wars movie. You just talk about it. But as opposed to the, the Force Awakens, where it was just like, okay, I wonder where they're going to do this, or how they're going to do this, and who's, who are Ray's parents, and blah, blah, blah. with this movie, it's all um, kind of trying to decipher why Ryan Johnson and Lucasfilm decided that they wanted to go in, in these directions, and it's not that they're they're bad choices, they're they're cool choices, and they're risky, and I like that, but just weird, but. Uh, one of the one of the logic issues with this thing is, uh, yeah, I'm on Twitch next gen. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining us. But one of the logic issues that I really have an issue with is, uh, ooh, we can steal a walker. Oh, I gotta be dead. Dead. Uh, is uh, like why can't the first order catch the rebel or the, the resistant ships? Yes, this is live. This is all live. Uh, why can't the First Order catch the Resistance ships? Like, it just doesn't make any logical sense. You know, the Resist the First Order has bomber ships just like the Resistance. They're competent pilots. They have all kinds of technology. We see that bomber ships and um, light starfighters are able to take down massive ships on the First Order side. Why is there no equivalency? Why is there no nothing that uh, can catch up. It just seems preposterous to have this slow-mo, you know, um, O.J. Simpson type you know, white Bronco chase in space that goes on and on and on. It gives uh, Finn and Rose the time to go down to, uh, um, what's it called, Quanta Bingo or whatever the, the uh, casino world is. I thought that was just kind of crazy. The scene in the throne room, this is what uh, DJ As Asper Asprob <laughs> Krutsiv, I, I don't know what you're saying, what your username is there, I don't know how to pronounce that, says the scene in the throne room with Rey and Kylo was awesome, that was magnificent, that was one of the best scenes in all of Star Wars, I would say, I would say. It's a drag that Snoke is gone, but... I can kind of deal with that. It's it's a cool choice, and it, and it kind of resets everybody for uh, uh, some kind of epic conclusion. But it also diffuses a lot of the um, uh, escalation and and uh, the power of the dark side. It kind of brings that down a little bit, right? Because it's just all on Kylo Ren's shoulders, and he seems like like he's going to be. Uh, uh, able to be brought over to the light side when he's he's constantly reminded, and it it's weird now because L L Carrie Fisher is gone, so we won't get to see unless they've already shot it. But if they stay true to their word of there not being any CG Leia in the in the movie nine, then we won't see Leia and Kylo have their reckoning, you know, have their face to face, and, and Leia basically slapping her son on the side of the ear and saying, "What the hell are you doing, man?" Um, yeah, if, even if Luke has passed away, you think he'll still appear in Episode Nine as a spiritual? But yeah, absolutely. Count on that. It might be just a small moment though, because um, it feels like they really want to pass the baton, and they really want the uh, the new characters to to uh, be meaningful. But. I don't know, there was a lot of unsatisfying stuff. Like, 8 is definitely not near the top of my Star Wars movies. I really liked it. I'm, a, I'm an Empire person. Um, or First Order Empire, yeah. I, I really liked it. Um, but it's just like the Dark Knight Rises. Like, I keep having these, these things that make me go, make me go, hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a key and peel football name sketch. DJ Asper Probin Probin Crux Siv. Trouble at the main computer. Um, I also thought, you know, I, I liked all of the um, uh, sort of poking in the uh, poking us in the eye 
about the Star Wars mythology kind of stuff, like the, how serious we take it all, like it's some, some kind of a religion. I liked all of that, but it was jarring, you know, when you see Luke is just not, uh, he just really doesn't give a crap about any of the, the stuff that we've been trained to treat with such, like, austerity and great respect and, and, uh, and then it's just like, yeah, whatever, I'm going to drink this green milk out of this cow, you know, out of this sea cow. Oh, we just took the fence. Okay. Come and get it. Nice. They're coming, they're coming. Um, still, incredibly entertaining. How many times have you guys seen the movie? Anybody see it twice? Or three times? Come on! Oh shit, sacrifice. Vic, your voice volume has gone low. My voice volume has gone low? Uh, when Yoda showed up, that put a big smile on my face. Yeah, that was amazing. That was awesome. Does my voice sound okay, guys? Let me know. Let's blast him. Um, I don't know if I can easily adjust. An agent I don't know of if the I can Empire easily adjust. Uh, let's see. Oh, my microphone volume is where it's supposed to be. Sounds okay. Rebels at the fuel station control. But it's at a hundred right now, so I, I, w I wish to, I'm just streaming it right from the Xbox One X, so I don't have any any uh, equipment in front of me that I can toggle or anything like that. Uh oh. Ah. Sounds fine to me. Good. Awesome. You guys excited for episode nine? Are you are you flipping out? Or are you uh, disappointed? How do you feel? Like, where, where are you guys at right now with with your Star Wars-ness? It's also weird that we didn't see anything on Solo. Like, it's coming out in five months. They've shut us out of the fuel station control. Regroup and defend the lost gotcha. system. Ah! He sniped me. Blue Mystic Ninja says, uh, Vader, uh, um, Kylo Ren is worse than Vader, Palpatine, and Snoke. If worse, Blue, Blue Mystic Ninja. Not as badass a, uh, a bad guy as those guys. A pretty cool bad guy. I like that he's. I like the ambiguity. Uh, ambig, ambig, uh, amb, ambiguity. <laughs> it's hard to hard to think and shoot at the same time. The ambiguity of Star Wars now. You know, the idea that the Force is not sort of bound to just being a Skywalker Kenobi thing. You know, kind of brings into focus the amount of of um, cool characters that existed in the. Uh, Jedi Council in the uh, in the um, prequels and in the Clone Wars animated Overbay stuff like the, it's, the Force is not dead. The Jedi might be gone, but the Force is not dead, and I like all that. The trailer for Solo is in a loot box you have to open. Yes. <laughs> oh man. I am just, I'm really curious how people are going to uh, ever discuss loot boxes in AAA gaming ever again after this year. Wasn't just Battlefront either. A lot of anger towards uh, Shadow of War and Need for Speed. 
Sports, uh, it's uh, definitely a steep learning curve. Yeah, I got somebody. Victory! Woohoo! Yeah, he is. Uh, uh, Blue Mystic Ninja. Yeah, he is pretty twisted. I, th I mean, I, I like I like the levels. Are you happy with J.J. Abrams directing Episode Nine, or would you like want somebody else? Uh, DJ Asperp, um, or Asperp. Um, I, you know what? After the amount of rock in the boat that Ryan Johnson has just done with Episode Eight, I think going back to um, the relative conformity and, and uh, sort of safety net of J.J. Abrams probably makes sense. Um, I think The Force Awakens is a great movie. I love that movie. And I, even though if it's safe, uh, I, I felt like that's exactly what we all needed. You know, the first line of the movie is, uh, this will begin to make things right. Uh, and that's kind of what it did. Uh, and, I, you know, I think J.J.'s capable of building something really really fantastic. I think what um, Ryan Johnson has done, though, uh, though, or, I mean, obviously he's cleared the table of a lot of interesting characters, but he's also uh, opened it up for J.J. to really get creative and ambitious with whatever he, come, he pulls together, so I'm, uh, I'm excited to that. I'd be so stoked for more VR for, from Star Wars. T Timberwolf, that's exactly what VR needs, man. 100%. I have to be honest, I haven't been rushing to pop a VR helmet on again since I played Doom VFR. I liked the, the experience of Doom, but I, I almost threw up afterwards after I took the helmet off, uh, the, uh, the PlayStation uh, VR um, headset off. I took it off and was like feeling very queasy, and I was like, I thought I was going to barf, and, and I, I haven't had the big urge to get it back into the VR space again since then. But Star Wars VR would get me to put the helmet on right away. Wouldn't matter what machine either. This is one of my favorite maps. Camino just looks amazing. Still haven't seen any of the, uh, the stuff on crate. I really want to. I don't. I don't know if there's a way to to choose it. So good. They did such an amazing job with the look of this game. Timberwolf, have you heard the uh, that it's uh, Star Wars VR for uh, PlayStation VR with Battlefront 2? Is that what's happening? Oh yeah, got you. Nice. Oh yes. Got some points, even in death. Uh, Vic Eagle Flight from Ubisoft has my VR helmet permanently attached. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, I like that. Did you forget to add another classic Electric Playground episode last weekend on YouTube? Um, I forgot, and then realized that we've got all of these um, Rocket and Raygun episodes, and all of the... Uh, um, rundown best of the year episodes, and I thought, okay, this that's a this is a good week of uh, a ton of content. Let's uh, let's take a little breather on uh, on classic episodes, but I will definitely post maybe more than one. I'm gonna let you guys know and everybody that listens to this in the archive what the plan is too. Um, I was gonna make an announcement uh, in uh, I guess pretty soon, but. Um, I'll probably make a couple of announcements, but uh, since you guys are here, um, we're deciding that uh, in 2018, uh, we are going to um, do as many live shows as we can. So uh, season 28 of Electric Playground is, uh, is basically going to be a live series. And we're going to try to do as many as we can. I, don't, I can't promise right away that we're going to be, be able to do one every single day, but um, I'm going to be reading the, the, uh, the rundown live, playing games, doing live interviews. Um, we're going to stream like crazy and, uh, and, and challenge ourselves, try to put the best shows together that we possibly can, but um, we are, we are going to be doing some really fun, crazy stuff. 
with the new content next year. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be super fun. Live is the way to go. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, we've been talking about it. We've been going back and forth about, you know, can we or when can we? And, and we just said, you know what? We've done two years of of uh, kind of our traditional television output with, with uh, edited pieces and things like that. We're, we're still going to edit some pieces, but um, it takes a long time, as you guys know, to put all these things together. So we're feeling like let's put some more time into, in the, into pre planning and production planning and coordination with the people that we know across the industry. Uh, industries, mind you. Oops, as I fly into something. Uh, and we're going to, I still got 400 points now. I don't know, that's amazing. Uh, we're going to uh, put all of that discipline and experience and relationship stuff that we have out there and make some awesome live content. That's the goal. That's the dream. Do I plan on, on uh, reviewing the original Blade Runner 4K release on Film Fury? Uh, maybe. You know, I'll, I've, I've already ordered the 4K Blade Runner 2049, so maybe that's a good... Uh, that's a good two for a two for in uh, in January. Man, that's not a bad idea. Um, we're going to be starting, by the way, our live stuff in uh, in the middle of January because we, when we come back, we want to put a little bit of pre-production time in before we uh, we flick everything on. So we'll, we'll we'll post some content. I'll be streaming some games and things like that. But uh, EP the new EP. Uh, We'll be going live, I think, on the 15th, January 15th. So keep your eyes out for that. And if you could, tell about 45 million people that, that we're coming. That would be very helpful as well. Thank you, Next Gen Expert. The other thing that we're definitely going to do, and, and the, um, the rundown was... Uh, uh, or the uh, Rocket and Regas this year was a bit of an experiment for that, was the uh, getting the uh, sponsors to send us video content and stuff like that. Worked out great. I'm very happy with it. People were really nice to give up some time and put some stuff on video and send it to us. And it, I, it makes me realize how m much people are connected and have all of this equipment, you know, and experience and knowledge. And uh, so I'm, I'm planning absolutely to, to uh, connect with the community um, in lots of cool ways that way, and, and uh, you know, I want I want you guys that support EPN and watch our content to, do, you know, see the faces of other people that uh, support us and, and watch our material or have a history with EP. Um, it's gonna be fun, man. We don't have the uh, the plat a big broadcaster or you know somebody kind of just creating attention for the work that we do these days. But we have the ability to reach people in some amazing collaborative and, and real-time type, types of ways that we just we need to uh, take advantage of. It's super fun. I'm usually live on YouTube because um, it's easier. I, I've been streaming a lot, obviously, off the PlayStation uh, uh, 4, and uh, YouTube is our main channel. And I, I find like our, my headache, my head starts to ache a bit because about where we're going with all of this stuff. And I don't think YouTube is, is particularly doing doing it the best. It's just a better platform for all of the uh, um, the edited pieces, you know, in our classic content, like the, the stuff that we've assembled. So it's become more of our home. Um, and we didn't really split focus and put a lot of energy into Twitch. We used to stream to both, and we might we might do that in the new year. Um, we'll see how much things change as we go live. You know, Twitch may end up becoming a bigger part of our uh, our offerings out there. But YouTube is certainly, I think, where the bulk of our our viewership is. Uh, plan is to go live at about 1 p.m. Pacific time every day. And obviously, you know, it's all malleable, and we're going to learn and. We're expecting millions of problems because every time we've ever live streamed it's, in the last couple of years, it's never been super easy. You know, like something invariably needs to be updated or patched or something's not talking correctly here or the audio's a nightmare. Something is going to go wrong, but we'll just deal with it. We'll get better. 
awesome, Adrian. When you go live, just call it Elect Plays Blast from the Past. Uh, we're we're just gonna call it Electric Playground. That's what we're going back to our 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 classic name, Electric Playground. So, Electric Playground or the Electric Playground Season 28 uh, will kick off on January 15th. Pretty crazy, right? And uh, in February, I might as well let you guys know now, but uh, I'll remind you. In February, I am going on a um, on a holiday for a couple of weeks. Um, so we don't know what we're going to do yet, um, but obviously I'm not going to be in the studio. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll have some stuff. We'll have some stuff go up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the one thing that's definitely been true the last couple of years is we've just had to learn all kinds of new skills, and it's super fun. Oh, it's so weird. I'm a stormtrooper, but I'm on the good guy side. This game really messes with your head <laughs> with all of its uh, cross uh, generational content. How are you enjoying this game, Vic? Just wondering with the recent patching fixed anything. I haven't picked it up yet. I've liked this game all the way along. I've, I've put hours and hours into this thing, and I think it's uh, I think it's a blast. Um, I can totally understand where people have problems with it. I feel like. It, I've never looked at Battlefront, because I love the first Battlefront too, and I, you know, I just, I just enjoy getting lost in the Star Wars space like this, no pun intended. Um, and I totally can understand people's issues with all of the loot boxes and, and uh, you know, the BS, the, the paywall. Uh, but I just, you know, I know it, it does take a long time to earn your characters, and, and, uh, it could play tighter. It could feel more like an Overwatch or a Battlefield or something. But I just I have fun when I play this game, um, and I don't think of it as like a, a hyper competitive thing. Like I'm I'm usually ooh I'm I'm way down at the bottom, but I'm usually in the middle, and that's that's okay. You know I I don't play this game thinking oh man I'm gonna be the best Battlefront player out there. I just play it to to go and be oh Yoda's on my side. I just play it to, to go and be in Star Wars, and it delivers that. I just got killed by the Emperor. Uh, uh, is this the same game that cost EA $4 billion in stock price? Yes, it is, Raymond. Uh, I played the first Battlefront 2 back in the day. Yeah, see, those are my favorite, some of my favorite online memories, period, for the, the uh, pandemic Battlefront 2. Incredible. Do you have a favorite Blu-ray release of 2017? Enjoy the big Vancouver st snowstorm today. Uh, Kookaboo. Um, Blu-ray release from 2017. You know, I was really shocked. I bought a 4K TV. I talked about it quite a bit this year. Uh, and of course I have the uh, Xbox One X. Uh, thank you Microsoft for keeping me up to date with the new Xbox. Um, Oh, I didn't know if he was on my team. All right, okay. Um, and so I've been buying some 4K Blu-rays. I haven't bought a lot of Blu-rays this year. Uh, I, I, my TV is from last year, and, and it was the last LG OLED that also does 3D. So last year, I bought the 3D version of The Force Awakens and uh, never fell in for the gimmick of, of 3D before, but this TV's... High resolution and 3D, actually really incredible. So I did pick up a few 3D Blu-rays, and then um, I've started to pick up a few more 4K Blu-rays, which are not in 3D. Oh my God! Look at this. Whoa! Did I get anybody in there? I got. Oh, I think I got a couple. Um, and so this year it's been about um, a, a few more 4K Blu-rays, and one that really shocked me was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That is just outstanding. It's an incredible movie, but all the making of and behind the scenes stuff, and it, it's just uh, it's profound to sit down and watch that and think that you know Spielberg was in his 20s, I think, when he put it together, and it's so good. Um, Fifth Element was kind of like that as well. I've taken a look at Wonder Woman and uh, oh, the Spider-Man Home Homecoming uh, 4K Blu-ray is fantastic. It's great. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Ouch. Um, have I watched Alien Covenant in 4K? I never want to watch that movie again. That movie was terrible. 
Oh, thank you, Nuka. I think you're making fun. Oh, it's not Nuka. Hold on, I can't read. I can't read that. I'm on my phone here, so Naka. All right. Oh, maybe I can read the uh, the chat this way. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, that's better. So what do you guys think? Last Jedi? Good movie? You hate it? You over it? Tired of talking about it? Still haven't played any of the Last Jedi uh, multiplayer content in this game. Pretty gutsy what Ryan Johnson did, right? Like, he really stuck his flag in the sand and said, this is what I'm making. And now we've got a trilogy from him that's coming up. And I, I really hope that kid that's at the end of... Uh, spoilers. At the end of right. Jedi. The Last Jedi. It has got nothing to do with Ryan Johnson's new trilogy. Oh, Jesus. Very good, DJ says. EA should have learned... Uh, should learn from the $4 billion lost in stock, but I doubt it. Raymond, there's going to be a lot of... Uh, a lot of change in the business based on what happened with this game. And I feel terrible for the developers because they just wanted to make something fun. And they did. Uh, oh, I don't like doing the comments on the TV. I, I like streaming the full thing because it looks beautiful. You know, I'm, I'm playing this on a on a 4K display <laughs> and it just looks amazing. And I want the stream to look good too. Oh, there's Vader. Yes! Oh, we lost a fusion core. Defeat! Boo! We tried to defend our home, and we failed. Oh, no worries. Run, it's Vader! The alien is the new Disney princess since Disney owns Fox now. Yeah, good point, Naka. Oh, brother, are we going to see the alien show up in... Uh, in a Star Wars movie. I'm, I'm level 10 now. No, I'm level 9. Okay, cool. I earned some money. I think I can unlock another character here. The only part I didn't like is when Finn and Rose went to the space casino. Yeah. I want to see the alien at Disneyland. Oh my god, that's hilarious. But could you could you guys imagine uh, Star Wars and Alien doing some kind of a crossover? Like we see the Alien, uh, like you, you know, the Alien uh, Skull or something, or they have some sort of intergalactic council, like in the uh, prequels, and, and and there's there's the Alien creature. Game developers are just like everything else; they're in it for the money, sadly. Well, Raymond, their business they, they are businesses, and they do have employees to feed and take care of and they do have to make money and they do have to make a profit in order to be able to move on to the next thing and, and the games industry has always been like that um you know back in the arcade days before all the consoles it was about how quickly people could get that next quarter out of your pocket but um i think what's happened is that the games have have uh they've filtered into our our sort of public consciousness so much that it's not necessarily like a magic trick anymore you know you're not fooling us with these awesome things that we just can't believe were crafted and that that we're able to explore these world like we we get that this stuff can be amazing and so it becomes much trickier to be um uh you know, less overt about how you're pulling money out of your consumer. And frankly, mobile and, and uh, free-to-play have really made things a little dirty, you know? Like, they've really, like a lot of companies that have had great success in those fields have uh, so influential, everybody wants a piece of that. And uh, so people are trying trying to make as many dollars as they can by using a lot of these tactics that 
you know, people forgive in, in one circumstance, but are incredibly offended by in another. And uh, it's just really messy. I mean, I... I totally understand the uh, the value for a player out there that just wants to play these games for free and um, you know might, might, buy, might buy some uh, loot boxes to have you know, some kind of new outfit or something like that I just I just feel like uh, we have trained a whole generation of players to feel like games be playable forever and cost as little as possible and uh, the value equation has been really damaged. And then the AAA, it, 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 you know, it's just too bloody expensive. I feel like the barrier to entry for games like this, uh, to just begin them, to just start them, it's just too expensive. And uh, it's just, it's silly. And especially if you're going to have your hand out for more money after people play an exorbitant sort of opening fee, you know. It's just, a, it's it's really messy. And I don't know what the answer is because free-to-play isn't going away and mobile games aren't going away and there's still great success there, but uh, um, I, I, I'm from, a, you know, from an era where content that's created and costs money to build and uh, is worth uh, your time and is valuable in your life as entertainment costs something and uh, it shouldn't be free I think when you're it's free with an asterisk when you start to get all kinds of uh, messiness and uh, and you have all of these these full price games feeling like well we want a piece of that huge audience that you know, we'll spend a hundred dollars for a cowboy hat. The simple days, yeah, we're we're never going back there. Yeah, we're never going back there. It's. Uh, I mean, I I don't know what the hell could make us go back there when when you know it's it, we have companies like Riot, which is a great company, and they're you know my hats off to them, but they're big, they're almost an industry unto themselves. So people want to be in that space. Yeah, Raymond, you're bringing up some good points, man. As setups, Stephen Nicklick says, as setups, the movies did their job, in my opinion. Yeah, Nine has the opportunity to be, um, uh, like, so cohesive. Like, the, the uh, it, it's, it can basically restart our ideas of what Star Wars is, you know, like, nobody's left, really, except f for Chewie. So they can, uh, they can completely reset the table in whatever manner they want. Just added best fighting game, yep. Yeah, next gen, I, 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 I miss the simple days too, and you know, like, we were obviously, uh, um, with, the, with both shows, we were you know, major champions of uh, people paying attention to video games, and I feel like we were making some great headway. We had lots of people. This is below. Damn it! We had lots of people watching the content, and lots of people reaching out and saying, "Look, we want to play games. This is great." You know, and and uh, we were making a headway. Not just us, but everybody that was sort of reaching people that weren't already playing, and uh, we got them to care and pay attention. And then mobile came along, and I sometimes feel so guilty because. In the uh, midst of all of our love and coverage of video games, I also fell in love with the iPhone and just what, what that meant for games. And we talked about that. And we weren't alone, but we talked about iPhone gaming and the rise of mobile all the time in our programming. And we got, you know, we turned people onto that world, I think, in, in a great big way. And then it started to really eat into people's time 
and consequently I think a lot of people just said, well that's enough, that's enough gaming for me, I don't need to spend 50 bucks or 60 bucks on a real AAA experience and this is all good. And uh, I think that's, that's, you know, led to some really awful crap. But it's also led to more people playing than ever before. You know, more people educated about games than ever before. I feel, though, that people think of games like they're just super disposable and not really worth talking about. They're kind of just this quiet obsession that they might have. And that's what I really wanted to change with, with uh, our programming. Like, I really wanted people to be talking about them with respect and adoration, like with the same amount of of fervor that people have for TV shows and movies and things like that. And I don't I don't necessarily, I mean, our, our, we do. All of us that are watching this and all of us that are on Twitch and go to cons like Comic-Con and stuff like that, but I just felt like games, you guys know, they're the best thing that we've made for entertainment. I just feel like they, uh, they should be talked about first, you know? Like they should be the first, that when you go to the entertainment section of, of uh, a website or a newspaper or whatever, they should be the first thing that's that's there, not movie stars or TV shows. It should be games because nothing beats them. But we got a long way to go. Uh, also, uh, also blame us on the internet uh, review uh, bombing or making a company lose billions of dollars. We don't play games like we did in the PS One era. Yeah, I feel like th that might be the case. Like there might be, you know, not necessarily. Uh, more people per game. I think people gravitate to like one duty or whatever and then they spend way more time in that world and they don't experiment and they don't try a lot of other uh, uh, sort of double-A games. But then also in the mix of all this is a, a rise in some really fantastic creativity in the uh, indie space which doesn't necessarily have to hit huge numbers but um, immense, you know, creativity and, uh, and ingenuity comes out of that development. So, I, I, like, this was an amazing year for video games, as the Rocket and Ray Guns illustrate. So even though there's lots to bitch about and complain about, like Mass Effect and loot boxes and, you know, all kinds of issues, Together. it's still been amazing, and there's still so much freaking fun to be had playing video games right now and they're never going away they're just going to continue to adapt you know they're going to continue to kind of morph into uh, the uh, business models and the uh, and the types of games that people are going to spend money on but i think it's great that people got so up in arms about battlefront and made uh, affected real change and let they didn't want this because it sent a signal not just to EA but to everybody else as well. You know, I don't think the game deserves the hate. You know, I've seen people post videos about bugs and stuff like that. And every game has got issues. Um, this is, like, in terms of what the game is, I think this is a pretty damn solid experience. But I totally get behind people saying. No way, Jose, with the, uh, with the loot boxes and the uh, and the grind. I love this level. Targeting. Full assault. All right. The, uh, your Uncle George said in 1979 that uh, was the only character definitely in all nine movies. Holy crap. Is that true, Timberwolf? I'm going to jump into an A-Wing. Why not? Um, 
And you know what? He's going to be in all nine episodes. He is. Kind of breaks my heart that he's just like a total supporting B character now. It's all BB-8. I love BB-8, but R2 is my homie. When I saw Star Wars in 1977 at the Dunbar Theater in Vancouver, I walked home with my mom and my brother and a couple of my mom's friends. It was R2-D2 that I couldn't believe. It was R2-D2 that was my favorite. It was just so cool. And as I got a little older, it was Han Solo. Everybody wanted to be Han Solo. That'll do, Chewie. Let's go get him. That's my terrible Harrison Ford. Uh-oh, we lost the cantina. So cool. Woo! And goes so fast, it's really hard to shoot at the ground. Ah, that's so rad. How do I get out of here again? This is so cool, man. Ah! Oh, uh, I have SNES MIDI. It's great. Love it to death. Yeah, it's incredible. Next gen. Uh, skip. Let's go. Uh, I don't want to be in the ship again. Let's see what I saw. Okay. Wonder what they're going to do with Leia. SA uh, 91387. Astromech. Uh, I totally wonder what they're going to do with Leia as well. That might be one of the biggest selling points of the uh, of Episode 9. I mean, I think there's a lot of people that hate Episode 8. They're going to carry that hate. They're going to let it flow. Um, but they're going to be very curious to see what JJ does with... Uh, my uh, to see what uh, JJ is going to do with Leia. Never got to meet Carrie Fisher. She was always at the uh, cons and stuff. One of our producers, Rob Koval, who worked with us for years, he, he, he got to meet her and have some nice interaction with her. I did have a couple uh, great meetings with Mark Hamill. He was always wonderful. Got to, got to say one, or ask Harrison Ford one question, which was incredible. I pretty much lost my shit. Um, talked to George Lucas a few times. George used to watch our the Star Wars segments on ET. They, they would, uh, LucasArts would put a, uh, uh, a screening. Free YouTube, guys. It was free everybody having digital effects all over the place. Um, so we, we worked pretty hard building these little mini movies in some of our segments. I don't know if you guys can remember that. Uh, but uh, the LucasArts folks would uh, play our EP segments for him in, in screening sessions. So he knew the show, and, he, and uh, I, I heard nice things about that, which was cool. He was filming a time travel movie in Summerland, huh? Robogato? Do you have anything signed by him, SA91? Uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I never, like, I've met a lot of people that have worked in movies and TV shows and stuff, and I don't generally ask them to sign anything because I'm, I'm usually working with them, like, on a doc or, or um, interviewing them for the show. And uh, so I don't, I don't usually ask them for photos or. It's, it's just a little, uh, it's a little, can be perceived as a little tacky, right? Um, so unfortunately I never did. I, well, yeah, I think when I met um, Anthony Daniels and, and, and uh, Admiral Piet, I might have gotten those guys to sign some things. Uh, 
Um, but I, yeah, I tended to avoid that. One, one thing I did do was get uh, Kevin Conroy to uh, do a, a voice message for me as Batman uh, on my phone, which was pretty awesome. That guy's incredible. I love that guy. I actually did a, a pan I moderated a panel you with him at Comic-Con one year, and then uh, the whole panel after, I think it was for the uh, Arkham Asylum animated movie, and the whole panel got to go out for dinner, and uh, I, I sat with him, so I got to really just like have dinner with Batman, which was ridiculous. I was very happy and excited about that. It was great. You know, what I was talking about, about video games being so, such, yeah, the best Batman and, and Joker, yeah, and I got to, we did the making of Batman Arkham Asylum, so I got to shoot those guys doing their work for that game, and watching them get into character was, like, one of the most profound and wonderful experiences of my life, it was incredible, particularly Mark Hamill as the Joker, God, that was, that was something to observe. Um, but uh, when I was talking about games being so much cooler than movies, I've had quite a few interactions with, with actors and celebrities and stuff over the years because of games. You know, either they're involved with them or, or we just ask them questions about them. And they feel the same way about games that we do. You know, like they get... They probably think, oh, there's, there's possible employment for me or whatever, but they're all just huge fans. They just love it. And uh, that's, that's been a really nice entree into having these cool, exclusive meets and conversations with people. Like when we used to go to Sundance, to, uh, we had a segment at EP for a long time called Game Face where we wanted to have uh, famous people that are into games talk about their games and stuff and um we, we we sort of dabbled with talking about more entertainment even when we were a weekly show and uh Sundance became a, a place that we would go and of course everybody's got their movies and stuff but and there were lots of famous folks that, that would go there but we found it really easy to engage with people because we didn't really give a crap about their gossipy you know life like every other entertainment show was like what are you playing? You know, what, what, why do you think games are uh, a cool new way to tell stories? And, and they, people, you know, didn't matter who we talked to, they were open to that conversation. And we always got really nice content, really nice interviews. A Force Unleashed three, yes, that would be amazing. Sam Witwer is a perfect example. This is this is a guy. He lives and breathes video games. He's got a Twitch channel. You guys should watch him stream. He's fantastic, and he, he's a great dude. Uh, and, and super approachable and super down to earth and and uh, just a lovely guy, you know. Like he and he really kicked ass as our star killer. He was great. I am a huge fanboy. Yes, I am. None of this would have started if I was not the ridiculously enormous fanboy that I am. <laughs> uh, I've seen Anthony Daniels at Star Wars in concert. Yeah, I saw that concert, Naka. That was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, I live in New York State. My attorney general wanted to investigate the FCC for fake comments, and now he's leading the fight against the vote. Fantastic, Raymond. Yeah, a lot of changes have to happen now, right? 86% of, of the population in America didn't want the uh, net neutrality overturned, and yet they overturned it. Ridiculous. What is happening with that visceral Star Wars game? Let's do it. It's... Uh, there's no visceral, and there's no Star Wars game being made by them. This space port, um, I think we're going to see a Star Wars Destiny game in two years being made by uh, EA Vancouver. And uh, it's probably getting a little bit of assistance from other studios all over the world. It's so cool, right? Look at this. Look at the detail, man. This is amazing. 
I feel terrible for the developers that worked their asses off to build this, you know, truly incredible game. And then it was all just butchered. Greed. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, blah. I don't know about that 13-13 game, Naka. I, I mean, I saw a lot of demos on it. They're great people, and I love all those LucasArts folks, but I, I don't know. I think I was probably skeptical because that was post um, Force Unleashed 2. And they really dropped the ball on Force Unleashed 2. They, there was, that was half a game. Uh, that that game should have been DLC for Force Unleashed 1. Ah, oh, shite. It ain't easy to make a great Star Wars game, you know? There's a lot of stuff that gets in the way. The first two Battlefront games from Pandemic, especially the second one, were great. Rogue Assault game. Rogue Assault, which it was, um, the N64 games and the GameCube game, those were great. X-Wing, but I think there's a lot of like logistics that get in the way. A lot of fingers and thumbs get on top of uh, the content as it's getting made, and and uh, so it's kind of a miracle. I feel like when you're vision comes together. So much of Battlefront from DICE and, and Battlefront 2 did come together. Some really terrific work in this. Can't fault anything that... Uh, no, I don't think I'm getting confused because I'm chatting so much. Um, can't fault any of the stuff that... Uh, Criterion worked on. They really rushed it with the, uh, the vehicle stuff. Space battles are amazing. Nice, he didn't even see me. Okay, and I got these guys right here, and I'm going to drop a grenade on them. Oops. I was moving. Got you. Got you. Three-player kill streak. Okay, all right, I got some points. Where am I? I'm near the top. Oh, my God, that won't last. Uh, all right, let's get in there. We'll secure that base. Oh, you little punk. There. Oh. He's just running. Oh, almost got him. Did I get him? Run! No, almost. Woo! New burnout, yes. You're speaking my language. Uh, boom. The tech was insane on 1313. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much, Matteo. 17. You're going to be streaming. You're going to see me streaming a lot more. That This is going to become part of uh, the way that we deliver content in a, in a much bigger way going forward. I've been, I've been uh, doing quite a bit of streaming in 2017. Trying to get better at it. 
sometimes tough to oh 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 oh, oh talk and shoot. I, I I shot Batman 007. I feel bad. Oh, he bought he killed me too. Find cover. Right. The rebels will oh, be let's coming. Get into an ATST. Absolutely. Uh, were you surprised that Cuphead was a huge success given the AAA controversial policies around games as a service? Um, I, I was ecstatic that Cuphead became a huge success. The game is amazing. New Splinter Cell sounds like music to my ears, next gen expert. Alright, this guy. Now we're talking. Oh, yes, land speeder. No, 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 no. Yeah, you better run. Get it! Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, this brings back memories. This is what I was always doing in Battlefront 2 on, uh, on the original Xbox. Yes! That was cool. Where are you? Where are you? On that one of the spaceships? Oh, this guy. Oh, defeat. Oh, I was having some righteous fun right there. It's really cool. Oh, this is fun. Not too bad, not too bad. Ah, uh, Duck Tom Tom. That was pretty cool. Got some points. All right. I earned 300 bucks. Not too bad, not too bad. Do I, do I know what games have been announced for the Switch? Uh, I think a lot of stuff is coming to the Switch. Nintendo's holding its cards close to its best. We do know Pokemon is coming. Um, we know that Metroid 4 is coming, but I expect that'll be 2019. I'll be sure. I mean, they they got a um, uh, Zelda and a Mario out this year, so I'm going to take that back. I think we are going to get a Metroid 4 next year. I think that's going to be one of the big releases. I would be shocked if we don't see... Um, I think we're going to get Smash Brothers from the Wii U with all kinds of amazing stuff. Um, and then we're going to get another Smash Brothers in this life cycle. Uh, my pleasure, Timberwolf. Thanks for joining, man. And Bayonetta 3, that's coming. And the uh, No More Heroes game is coming. An Obi-Wan movie, yes, with you and McGregor. I think everybody's on board with that, DJ. I love you, McGregor. He's awesome. All right, I think this is going to be my last one because I've been uh, streaming here for a little bit. And uh, I want to see my kid. I haven't seen her today. She was at school all day. So let's go, let's go create a ruckus out there. Still have not played on Crate yet. I don't know what you got to do to play in the, uh, on Crate. But uh, I don't know if it becomes part of the, uh, the regular rotation or not. But I haven't, I haven't gone in there yet. Don't have long. Hey, Donnie, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, so I am shooting at stormtroopers. Ah, uh, thanks, Kookaboo. And move fast, because there's a whole planet worth of troopers here. Yeah, I think we all are shocked, DJ. The switch is just phenomenal. I mean, it's uh, it's. In, incontrovertibly uh, wonderful. Like, it's just a great platform. Whenever you see one on an airplane, it might be me that you see playing it on an airplane, <laughs> but whenever you do, it's just like, yeah, that person has got shit figured out. That, that person is having fun right now. They are playing Mario or Mario Kart or Zelda on an airplane. They are not fooling around. Oh, 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 oh. Ow, ow, ow. We go. Um, 
see you, everybody. There they are, there they are, there they are. Dead. Woo! How did I survive that? Eagle move. Oh, that was weird. Stranded back there. I'm going to jump in with my X Wing, why not? Swan Gore, this game is fun, man. They're they're tooling it, they're fixing it. They're adding content to it. They're listening to their their audience. They have no choice. That's cool. Way too easy. Double laser's almost blown. Oh, yes. Nice. Woo. Super cool. The trouble laser is destroyed. Ah. Wrap it up and change target. My hand slipped off it. Oh, that was rad. Raymond, yeah, I think you know the answer to that. Call of Duty World War II was definitely a step back. A-Wing on this level is really fun. Okay. Don't have the budget now, so I'll just be my assault guy. Fly out farther, yes. Next time I will. That was fun. Okay, I'm not doing too bad. Uh, let's go. Let's go. That's what I just said. Uh, yeah, that's frantic. Someone's killing our people. First order elite. I guess it's uh, Canto Bite is probably the most disappointing thing. Would you guys agree with The Last Jedi? It had a prequel whiff about it. You know what I'm saying? I have no issues with Boyega or with uh, the woman that plays Rose. Or the characters. Um, but they were not utilized well as they could have been. Ah, oh, where are they? They got me out there. Okay. That's cool. I'm with you. Yes, they do. What if you don't use your posts? You earn oh the money that you earn. Um, yeah, you're you're accumulating Counter Strike wise. Uh, your dough, but everything gets reset after uh, you either win or lose a match. Oh, Jesus. What the hell is going on there? Got you. <laughs> Didn't see that grenade. Okay, so I, we lost. Yeah, that's a hard one for uh, the troopers. Uh, was this game... Uh, was this game also the most downvoted in Reddit history? Yes, I believe it was. Thanks, Robogato. Um, how did I do? Did I win anything? Fourth? Second? Am I in there? I'm never in there. No. Ooh. Six eliminations. Four deaths. Okay. Um... 
lots of comments. Thanks for uh, jumping in, you guys. Um, Star Killer Base, yes. Just want to know more about Snoke. How did he get to be where he is? Yeah, I don't know if we're, we're going to get that, are we? <laughs> Swan Gore, I think Blake, bro. I, I think he didn't even care. I think that he literally was just like, meh. You know what? I'm going to quit this. I'm going to see if there's any way that I can figure out how to... Uh, I don't know how to play the crate stuff. I don't know if they're, like I have to go into another mode or something like that, but I, it has not popped up. I have not seen any of the uh, Last Jedi stuff. It's weird how they... Randomized level in this game. I got crate 8 out of 10 times the other day. Oh, I haven't even seen it. I've played... Uh, now I've been playing for almost an hour and a half. The other night I played for an hour and a half. I haven't even seen crate. Yeah, the Porgs are actually pretty cool, weren't they? Shere... Uh, Shere Khan. Long load times in this. Naka, definitely Snoke will be uh, in the comic book. And so if you guys read the Marvel Star Wars comic books, there's some great work in there, by the way. They're all really rad. All right, let's... You know what? I think I'm going to unlock... I'm at 12,000. Should I keep going and get Vader? So this is where I, this is where I have to get. I have... Uh, Chewy... How do I unlock it? Boom. Confirm. Leia is in my posse. So I just have, uh, I have three characters to unlock, and that seems okay to me. I don't know if it's because they uh, they adjusted everything to make it easier. So the last Jedi challenges. What do I have to do? Hit them with everything you've got. Oh, I have a, I've got a, a reward. There we go. It's, what do I get? 500 credits? Okay. Getting all my monies, because this is a game about currencies. What's this milestone? As a trooper, I can claim my reward right there. There's another one, I think, right? Collection. What do I have? 2600 Okay. Cool. I don't need to spend any money there. Let's see. I have a crate I have to open. You guys are watching me open up a crate. Here we go. Ugh. So silly. Reveal them all. Let's go. I got 25 crafting parts. Um, so I want to play on crate, but how do I do it? Let's play the strike and let's see where we end up. Big money, big money. <laughs> it's so true, right? <laughs> Donnie, I think everybody here has seen the movie. I asked, I asked everybody. I definitely will be streaming some uh, PUBG, man. I uh, SA, SA9. I definitely will stream some. And they beat us over the head with forget about the past stuff. Christ, they even killed Luke Anakin's lightsaber. They did, didn't they? Yeah, it was like uh, this is a new Star Wars, and and you just got to deal with it. All of that's fine. I just f I feel like. Um, Oh man, we're in Endor again. I just want to see Crate. I want to see the new stuff. 
Is there a way? Does anybody know? Is there any way to check out the new stuff? I did ride a Tauntaun. Yes, it was super cool. Uh, Vidme was shut down doing part to the YouTube advertising. Really? Wow. Uh, I want to know what happened to Luke's green saber as well. Yes, good point, DJ. I guess we'll never know. I, f I feel like that's the thing, right? Like, you, uh, we are just going to have to live with the mystery. That's what Ryan Johnson is saying. You just got to keep trying, Robogato. It's so weird. Like, I've played this for hours since the, uh, Last Jedi stuff came out, and I have not seen those levels. What, how many levels is this? Is it just Crate? Are we just on Crate, or is there another one? I should know this, but I don't. Hey, okay, that was amazing. Woo! You, see, you guys see what I did there? Yes, achievement unlocked. I got an achievement, and I got all these points. I was awesome in that match yeah okay now send me to crate let's go mvp <laughs> the dlc for for uh, i earned a credit woohoo all right look at that double zeros Come on. Naboo. I'm playing on uh, Xbox One X. There was a big blog post about Vidme shut down because it wasn't making money and they wanted to put ads on the site, but with the YouTube ad boycott, Vidme saw a jump in users. Oh, yeah? Okay. Okay, this is seriously going to be my last match. This is a hard game to put down, actually. It, it, it is pretty fun. Um, so, because uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do some other things. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll we'll have one match. We'll see how we do, and uh, and then we will all carry on with our lives. But it is awesome that you're all here. All right, let's go, guys. We are stormtroopers, but we are good guys. All right. I love that you—you uh, you can hear your breath. Let me start running. Ouch. Beautiful, huh? Really nice. Got you. Come on, you sons of bitches. Where are you, Roger, Roger?
Ah, they got me. All right. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet looking game. Roger, roger. Um. Lost in the uh, the black of the thing there. <laughs> I swear to God, no one <laughs> sells Doctor Who socks in in Toronto. <laughs> That's a great comment, Donnie. <laughs> I love all the pedestrians just scattering. That's so cool. The leaves floating through the earth. Fantastic looking game. Assault. Let's do this. Get to beta and secure it. Oh, we lost one. Beta has been destroyed. Let's get the gunship Alpha. Let's save it. Ah. Got All right, let's go do this. <laughs> yeah, Audrey on Tommy's ratings were hilarious. We actually got a note from Discovery at one point. It's just like, okay, this, this it's funny that he's got all these things, but it, can you guys just make that a little bit easier for people? And uh, that's when we went to the point five. Find every last droid in the area. Yes! Galactic Republic Rundown! Yes! But that's not it. Let's go. Oh, thank you, the Wren. Is that Ian? Good to see you. You caught it at the tail end, though, because I'm, I'm basically going to do uh, until this match is over. Win or lose. Oh, that was the round, I see. Yeah, we're playing the strike mode. That's right. Uh, ooh, nice, 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 nice. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Paint hostile. Watch out behind you, buddy. Get them all. Okay. Quad 
Oops. All right, all right. Got you. Got you. Nice. Ah, that was some good playing. I my gun heated up. Have you played the campaign of this Vic? Yeah, I beat all of the campaign stuff. It was fun. I'm gonna be a rocket trooper. I like these guys. It was fun. It was uh, it's it's not uh, amazing. Like most of the campaigns in Battlefield games are not amazing, but it's fun. It's it teaches you the game. You get lots of cool cameos. This is a solid experience, guys. Uh-oh. I was going to land in the water. Get him! Definitely harder to play in third person. A disadvantage if you don't play third person, yes, because you can see all around you. You're right, just a better field of view, but it's easier to play. Get over there, guys. Bottom. Boo. Ah. Nice work. They got me. Get over there. Come on, rocket guy. Grenade out! Troopers to Alpha, repeat. Move to the 
Ah. Alright, I can be a rocket guy though. Oh, we lost that round, so we're tied up. Okay, that was fun though. Oh, I can still be a rocket guy. Yeah, rocket guy is okay. What's your trip up? I wasn't able to be the rocket team. Him. Oh, we lost gunship alpha already. Oh, Jesus. Watch out. Ah, they got me. Son of a bitch. Get over there. Get down to the charges and face. Get. Got me. Eat it! Uh-uh! Oh, Jesus! Oh! Did I get him? No. What the hell is he doing? He's like bouncing all over the place. Ah!
asteroid is done. Yes! Woo! That was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. I dug that. I love talking with you guys, too. Um, and uh, I hope... I hope uh, you guys have a fantastic holiday season. And... Uh, this was being played on the Ren. This is on the Xbox One X. Uh, it's streaming right out of the console. Um, I will be back throughout the holidays. I'll play some other games. We will catch up about stuff. Um, there's going to be some cool announcements about what's going on for next year. So stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, have yourselves a ton of fun and keep gaming and keep playing and spend some good time with your families. And, and uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. And Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Uh, and I'll be back soon. Take it easy, everyone. Thanks for being on, on the stream with me today. May the force be with you.